crises at the same time, the financial crisis, but also the climate crisis. And the Green New Deal argues that you cannot fix the ecosystem unless you transform the economy. And we begin with the concept of credits, that the bankers create a lot of credit and they are not regulated. So the, money, the credit is then pumped into consumption and to production, which creates emissions. And unless we correct that, manage the, the credit system, then it's not going to be possible to manage emissions. So the Green New Deal is about structural change. In the past, uh, environmental campaigners wanted individual behavior change, eat less meat and so on. Also community change, reuse, recycle. We are arguing that you need structural change to the economic system to save the ecosystem. Before, we didn't speak about transformation of the economy, but now we're all talking about that, and there are many ways you can transform the economy at the global level, international level, at the national level, but also at the local level. In Britain, for example, we have to grow our own green beans. Right now, we import green beans from Kenya. So we drain the water table of Kenya, uh, we exploit their labor, we put it on an aeroplane and we fly it to our supermarkets. We can't do that in a world that has to be ecologically sustainable. We have to end that carbon use and instead we have to be more self-sufficient in my view. Now people argue what happens about Kenya? Well I think Kenya now no longer has to support the north she can concentrate on supporting the people of Kenya. And I'm quite sure that Kenya is rich in resources and is able to do that. The trouble for Kenya is that we extract resources from countries like that, including precious water resources. First of all, we know that 10% of the population are responsible for 50% of the emissions. The top 20% of the population are responsible for 70%. So therefore it is unfair that the rest, the 80%, should pay the price of their extravagant use of, of uh, our nature's resources. So I'm against carbon taxes as such. For me and for us in, in the Green New Deal group, we understand that actually the scale of the work that must be done to protect the ecosystem is such that it has to be undertaken by the state. And we believe that the state should, what we call front end investment before we could tax, right? In other words, for the gilets jaunes, we should provide them with an alternative transport system before we clobber them for their existing transport system, it's not their fault. So the man with a little van going around rural areas of France, how else must he travel if there's no public transport? So the state should invest in transforming transport, energy and land use systems to enable people to behave differently and to live differently within our ecological limits. That's how we think about it. And I always remind people that in London we had a radical left-wing mayor, uh, Ken Livingston, and he wanted to introduce the congestion charge, and many people were against this. But on the day that he introduced this tax, he also put 300 new buses on the streets of London. That meant people could get out of their cars into the bus. Then they didn't mind paying the congestion charge when they brought their car in occasionally. And that's how we have to think about it. The government has to provide the alternative, then we think about how to tax.